Hey guys, this is Brian Jones from Old School Jiu Jitsu, and I'm here at Area 502 MMA in Louisville with Phil Perkins, who owns the gym. Phil, appreciate you having us. Thanks, thanks for coming, man. So, we're going to just talk a little bit about your gym, your experiences, and everything else. So, uh, so you're a black belt under? Under Carlson Jr. Okay. Um, Mike O'Donnell was my coach in Lexington. Uh, Mike was the Right. First black belt in Kentucky. Is this um, Mike right here, guys? Yeah. It's Mike right there. And then um, over here to the left? It's Carlson Jr. Okay. And, uh, Carlson Sr. All right, nice. That, that, you're representing that lineage right off the bat. Yes, sir. You got your lineage. It's got a nice setup up here. Kind of pan all the way, you can see, all the way down here. Maeda all the way down. Oh, okay. Well, who's this fella now, Dr. Jones? That's Atsuyo Maeda. So that was his relation to jiu-jitsu. So he came over from Japan to Brazil to teach and fight, and so he's the one that taught Carlos, and the rest is history. Okay, so Carlos. Now this is Carlos here? Yes, Carlos Sr. Okay, so is he kind of the one that uh, started everything? So Carlos is uh, sort of the, the godfather of, of jiu-jitsu. So he kind of took jiu-jitsu and kind of set it on the course. So, now he has 12 rules of jiu-jitsu, right? Yes, so he had uh, 12 rules of jiu-jitsu. A lot of people have them up on their academy walls. He was more into the spiritual side of things and uh, the, the mystical side of things too, sort of the end of his life. So okay, so, Car so Carlos, like, so like when parents are thinking about a martial art, uh, like they're getting their children in, they have, uh, you know, they have a lot of questions about how it's gonna build character and stuff. And, and so you're saying that kind of Carlos, you know, that's what was important to him. Absolutely. Okay. Definitely. Now, so as we move down the line here, what about Carlson? Because I've kind of heard, uh, you know, Carlson was primarily uh, concerned with uh, competition. He's the one that uh, kind of introduced the idea of uh, hard cross training to jiu-jitsu. Is that right? Yeah, he was uh, had a big team. He held upheld the, the family name for years, fighting a whole lot. Um, he started really young, and so he was very into bringing in people and uh, boxers and wrestlers to kind of uh, provide some uh, cross training because he was very very focused on the fight okay and now Phil I know you're focused on fights with your gym uh, you do a lot of mixed martial arts and you got started with uh, I guess did you meet Carlson jr. first or Mike O'Donnell first? Uh, Mike I trained with Mike for you know a little while before Carlson come down he's down pretty often so it wasn't too long before I met him but uh, Train started training with Mike in 2008. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, so, I met Carlson shortly after, and yeah, I just kept training with Mike. Uh, of course, much more often, Carlson's all over the world, and Mike's in Lexington. And so, we go up there monthly, um, sometimes a couple times a month for and, a long time. So. And so, around Kentucky, uh, you know, Michael O'Donnell for sure was one of the pioneers in terms of. Uh, of uh, like the mixed martial arts aspect of jiu-jitsu is that what drew you to jiu-jitsu uh for sure the the first thing that actually got me into it was seeing an old mma fight i think it was ufc 20 or 22 um trey telegman was his duty he had like a, a chest cavity that was caved in uh-huh yeah and uh pedro hizzo i think fought on there and i can't remember the tough guy pete pete williams the head kick heard around the world he head kicked uh, mark coleman I that was like one of, the, one of the first videos I picked up at a video store, so it's not like I, I watched UFC 1 like everybody else. But <laughs> That's was, me and Jones. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. We're a little older. <laughs> Phil is talking about UFC 20, Jones. We, yeah, we did. So. <laughs> We're a little older. I saw those too, and everybody has their inspiration. You know, they see the stuff, and it's the same thing, really. Every, just history repeats itself. Uh, people get into it for the same same reasons. They want to fight, want to defend themselves, and want to compete, get in better shape, all that sort of thing. So what's funny here is that uh, you started, you watched UFC 1, uh, like the rest of us, and uh, then uh, we we all started training at uh, O'Donnell's place, and you watched UFC 20, and yeah, that's when I you think, started? I think it was 20, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so. crazy. Um, all right, well, let's... Uh, Let's talk a little bit. Let's get back over here because this is very interesting. This, uh, this kind of the way this lineage goes. Okay, so with Maeda, Doctor Jones, uh, I guess, I guess, if Maeda was from uh, from Japan, was he representing the Kodokan? He was. Uh, was the Kodokan established at that time, or was he just representing Japanese jujitsu or judo? Or 
Now he came over, uh, the Code of Con had already been established, it was established in 1882, and uh, he came over, uh, I can't remember the year on off the top of my head, honestly, and he started to teach and uh, basically spread jiu-jitsu. So Kano wanted to spread jiu-jitsu throughout the world, so a lot of people left the Code of Con to teach in other countries, and Brazil was one of those countries. And so whenever, but he was a prize fighter, and Kano didn't really approve of prize fighting, so he he was not uh, in favor with the Code of Con, but he stayed over there and ended up settling over there. Okay, so uh, judo heavy prize fighter. Now, Phil, I know you do a lot of uh, a, a lot of mixed uh, martial arts competitions. Your team's always representing uh, well. Uh, so, like, you're, 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 you, you, you teach a lot of takedowns, a lot of throws, things like that. A lot of people don't think of jiu-jitsu as being, uh, you know, being a, a throw-heavy game. But how do, you, how do you address that at your school? Uh, we, we do a lot of wrestling. Um, every fight, whether it's a, a fight, a jiu-jitsu match, whatever, they all start standing. So there, there has to be an effective way to take it to the ground. Um, pulling guard's not really the most effective in uh, my book, so we do a lot of wrestling. We do some judo takedowns, but uh, we're more of a wrestling-based school. Okay, so now when uh, Maeda came to Brazil, weren't there a lot of catch wrestlers in Brazil, Dr. Jones? There were. There were a lot of catch wrestlers, and I think um, when people talk about Luda Livre, a lot of times it, it back in, in, in the early early days uh, Luda Libre and Catch were sort of kind of intertwined in terms of people would call one or the other um, so there's there's a lot of catch wrestlers that came from Europe to fight as well so there were a lot of Germans and so there were Swedes. mixed competitions oh, so for, since day one yes so there were there were people coming over to fight uh, all over the world, so it's not it's not a new phenomenon. So so uh, Maeda comes and he's spreading uh, judo, spreading uh, you know like putting his art to the test, and then he teaches judo to Carlos. Okay, now we were talking earlier about Carlos's twelve rules. Uh, did he get those from uh, from from judo? I'm not sure. I know that. There's a big moral principle to judo, so I'm sure that influenced him. But it's kind of a he was he was sort of a mystic uh, himself, so he may have developed those kind of on his own as a general set of guidelines. Now, so Phil, when people come here, and I know you're, you know, like a lot of us, you're like heavy into the competition aspects of jujitsu. Uh, but I know, you know, like parents have to come here stuff a lot too. So do you find yourself like? Is it hard to balance like those traditional questions that parents ask you? Uh, you know, when you also are obviously producing killers because I see them every week at the fights. Mm. Um, well, we are a fight-based gym. We started with mostly fighters. Um, it's hard to kind of, like you said, balance both. But we've been lucky. We have all of our programs are grown. We have women, kids, just people from all over the place, train for fun, fitness, all kinds of reasons. But uh, we've, we've been very lucky. Um, a lot of our coaches just have a background in, in fighting, and, and it's just something that we're, we're able to, to balance. So, so you would never teach jiu-jitsu without the self-defense aspect? Personally, I would not, know. Okay. All right, now, can you guys move on over here, and let's talk about... Uh, so Phil, Phil says, you know, he's uh, wrestling heavy. Uh, and uh, then Dr. Jones, I know that you have a judo black belt. And so, you know, this right here, you two guys standing in front of Carlson, that's like, it's, it's like perfect because Carlson, didn't Carlson bring anybody and everybody he could into his academy to cross train? Definitely. He was one of the first, I think, to incorporate boxing and wrestling into his program. So he, he actively recruited people that did those things and then cross trained as much as possible. And the first one of the first to train without the gi, I believe yeah, too, true. really yeah, spread exactly. training without the gi and more just fight based training in general. Um, how, how much training do you do without the gi, Phil? Is that mandatory? Uh, uh, or I mean nothing's really I mean if you want to compete, I, I make you do both or both are mandatory, you don't make you do anything. But um, uh, yeah, I, I train. I train actually a little bit more in the gi these days. Um, just a little bit easier for me to, to get my workout in and, and not get hurt as much. But I still catch wrestling once a week when I can, when I'm feeling good. And uh, you know, no gi probably three times a week. I just I'm in, I'm in the gi more. You know, teaching and training. And so. Now, Dr. Jones, what about you? You you know, like what they say is, uh, young judo men 
uh, like to throw and old judo men uh, like to like to be on the floor. Uh, do you find that to be true too? I still like to do takedowns and I think it's an important thing to do. I mean obviously stuff takes a toll on your body. Um, whoever thought of this is the, said this was the gentle art I think maybe uh, <laughs> could have called it something else. But it's, it's gentle in the sense that you're yielding to your opponent, but it's definitely uh, going to bang up your body over, over the years. So I try to uh, make sure that I, the biggest thing is knowing how to fall, you know, okay. and, and that's, that's the biggest thing. Is now, the, Phil, being a wrestling-based uh, gym, like my 13-year-old son is over there, and uh, he wrestles competitively, and you know how much time they spend on break falls? Zero. Zero, right? How much time do you spend on break falls? They spend all the time not going to their back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How much time do you, do you, do you teach break falls as part uh, yeah. of your warm-ups? Oh, yeah, I mean, it's part of warm-ups and yeah. stuff we do pretty often, you know. Um, I, I don't. We don't have as much emphasis on it as, as probably a judo class would, uh -huh. but, um, yeah. So well, just, see, I think that's very interesting because despite... Uh, uh, you know, Dr. Jones pronounced age uh, <laughs> that you guys are both representing old school jujitsu in the spirit of uh, Carlson with the with the with the you know a lot of cross training, but like the, your gyms and your teaching styles both emphasize different things and like so to me that's a good point about we can you know we can keep jujitsu focused on self defense you know what we what we're calling old school jujitsu but there's still a lot of room isn't there. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the main thing is that you know how to control the fight standing up. It's 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 when you never train stand up in any way that you're really missing out on half of the game because you can't just sit down and scoot around on asphalt if you have to use it outside. <laughs> I've seen many people pulling guard out there. Uh, well, that's true. That's true. But hey, listen. Uh, be honest. Uh, what are you gonna do with Francis Ngannou? You gonna you gonna throw Francis Ngannou? I, I'm not going to fight a guy like that. That's, that's why I carry what are you going to do when Francis comes up? Y all, y all, not not wrestling or judo or jiu-jitsu. <laughs> None of those things. Okay. All right. Well, Phil, we've got a, kind of a standard little interview that we do, and uh, we would love for, uh, to get your answers on it. And then if you would give us a tour and uh, maybe show us uh, you know, a couple of your favorite old school techniques, that would be awesome. Sweet. Sounds good. All right. Dr. Jones. Gi color. One. White only. Two. White, black, blue, three, doesn't matter. Uh, white, black, blue. Belt ranking system. Perfect, needs work. Uh, I think it could use a little work on the kids, but the rest is good. good. Tattoos. Yes, no, doesn't matter. <laughs> well, wait a minute here, Dr. Jones. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have there's uh, there's two, uh, two zombies doing knee on belly. Oh, that's sweet. So, uh, uh, but I, specifically, I, yeah. what about... Uh, Face tattoos. Face tattoos, neck tattoos. As long as you're a good person and you're a positive part of the team, we don't judge anything. Everybody's welcome. Physical appearance, fit and trim, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what what everybody is. I personally like to try to stay fit and trim. Competition, mandatory, optional. Competition is optional. It's uh, we we push it heavy here, but it's definitely optional. No gi training, mandatory, optional. No gi is uh, just like anything optional, but if you want to compete, definitely mandatory, 100%. Jiu-jitsu takedowns, awesome, not so awesome. Jiu-jitsu takedowns are awesome. Wrestling takedowns, judo takedowns. Leg locks, awesome, not so awesome. I like leg locks as well, also awesome. Self-defense focus, mandatory, optional. Real self, the real life self defense is 100% mandatory. Not you know, not the self self defense that you'll learn some places, but that's why we come to the gym to learn to to defend ourselves in one way or another. So, sex is only for procreation. Helio had it right, or Helio was crazy. Uh, Helio lost his mind. <laughs> uh, but on this one, on this one, I'd have to disagree with with Helio. Uh. <laughs> All right, Phil. Thanks a lot. Uh, now you can show us around your gym. Thanks. Sounds good, guys. Thanks, Phil. Where are we going now? Uh, down here is the uh, private gym. Uh, we call it the jungle gym. And, uh, well, I got to turn some lights on down here. Dang, I like this. Uh, I like this graphic on your door. Yeah, we got some inspirational quotes. Trying to keep the good vibes going.
But yeah, this is uh, the Jungle Jam. It's our private jam where you know all the fighters work out, plus all of our members come in here. We got people that sign up just to come to the gym. Wow, but, this is uh, very nice. Yeah, one thing that I talk about a lot is people say technique is everything. And whoever says technique is everything is kind of full of it. Uh, technique is nothing without strength and conditioning, so we make sure to stay in good shape. That way uh, we're able to use all the tools that we have. If you're tired, you, you can't do much at all, so we try to stay fit and stay right. So. Dang, this is great. Uh, yeah, so we have uh, our fighters train here throughout the week. There's not really a mandatory uh, something that we ask from each fighter. Every fighter is kind of individual, and as you know, so we, uh, but we do make sure strength and conditioning is a very important part of what we do. Um, like I said, whoever said the technique is everything, um, they probably didn't work out. Um, strength and conditioning is everything. Without strength and conditioning, your technique is nothing. Sometimes you have a guy that's not as good, but he'll win just because he's in better shape and the other guy's out of shape. So we take it very serious, um, and this is where we, where we do our work in here. It's called the Jungle Gym. It's just a part of uh, Area 502. Dang, very nice. What do you think, Dr. Jones? This is a this is a pretty cutting, uh, cutting, cutting. Uh, what do they call it? Cutting, cutting edge. Cutting That's edge. It is. It's got everything. Yeah. It's got nice Dang. dumbbells. Very nice. Ways. Look at this mural it's over here. Who did this mural for you? Yeah, it's Chris Mays did the mural, and uh, of course we're in Louisville, which is the home of Muhammad Ali. So we had to represent, get a um, Muhammad Ali mural. This actually used to be our boxing and jiu-jitsu area before we expanded, so that's why we had all this here. Um, this but now, now it's a part of the gym and we've expanded out back and I'll show you guys that next. So. All right, let's go, let's go take a look. Same thing I do. Now Phil, this uh, another cool mural, same guy. No, this one was done by uh, Braylon. He's a, another uh, artist here locally. He does all kinds of good work. He's uh, one of the most well-known artists, actually. He came wow. over here and knocked this out in a couple hours for me. No one way. Day. It was super cool of him. He just took a picture of the logo and came out here. A couple cans of paint I had up there. And nice. They thing you know, it's a beautiful piece of artwork. And it's pretty cool. The you know old school Carlson Gracie logo is the rooster. And uh, my nickname when I was fighting was the rooster. So. Our logo ended up being a rooster too. Okay, very nice. Pretty cool. All right, Phil, so you have a boxing ring, and I guess these are all your competitors here. Yeah, we got, uh, we're here at Area 502. It's the home of Five Star Boxing. Uh, coach Aaron Sheckles, um, Coach Brian Jackson, they're both the boxing coaches here, the head boxing coach. And yeah, the, the name of the program is Five Star Boxing. We have kids, boys and girls, from four or five years old all the way up to who knows how old, probably. Um, kids that compete all across the country. We got kids ranked in the top ten, U.S. Boxing. And uh, it's one of our one of our best programs here. Uh, they've been here a couple of years now, two or three years. It's just been a, a great fit for us. And uh, yeah, so... Make sure anytime you guys see Five Star Boxing, you support Five Star Boxing just like you support Area 502. So. Dang bag area. It's a nice uh, facility here. So do, you most, do you have most of your classes down here? Yeah, most classes are out here. Yeah, we... All right, Dr. Jones, what do you think so far about Phil's gym? It's awesome, and I uh, really appreciate the tour. He's been showing us around. Uh, um, Bill, you want to show us a technique or something that maybe that uh, you can grab one of your guys and show us a little something yeah. that people might find useful? Yeah, yeah, I think um, I got something for you. Um, maybe something that is overlooked a lot of times. One thing we like to train in here is, you know, mixed martial arts, MMA is a combination of martial arts, boxing, Muay Thai, uh, wrestling, uh, Jiu Jitsu, all these martial arts. But there's things in mixed martial arts that we train that you don't train in those other martial arts. So um, we like to focus on those areas, um, one being wall work, another area being places you're laying on your back, which you do do some stuff in jiu-jitsu, but there's differences when punches are involved. So we'll kind of show you some of the stuff we've worked, uh, worked on over the years. So I'm going to show some stuff from here. And what happens if you're in this position and you're on the street and somebody... If you get lucky and they know absolutely nothing and they walk forward with both feet and they're punching you in the face with both feet forward, 
Yeah, I can go to my old school sweep, which I just call it old school. There's probably a better name, but it was one of the first sweeps I ever learned. So I go to my old school sweep here and I'll just, you know, kick the hips. Um, but even further than that, we're going to act like this person knows what he's doing. He's got one foot forward. Okay, that way I can't do it. And he's still trying to strike me, of course. So what I'm trying to do first is not get hit. What I want to do is I want to start getting up kicks going. When I do an up kick, I'm not just kicking. I'm pushing on his hip. I'm raising my butt up off the mat and I'm trying to kick the heel to the face. And Raj does just what anybody would do. They pick their head back. They don't want to get kicked. So even from there, I have some more options. From here, I'm going to now throw a kick from here where I'm trying to heel kick him in the sternum. Just getting him where he's not wanting to come in and hit me anymore. He's thinking twice. Now I can go to my plan A sweep is what we call it. Again, there's probably other names for this stuff. But when I go through here, I'm just going to hook under the far side knee. I always keep the ankle. And just like in recess, when you used to step on somebody's feet and push their upper body, it's the same principle. I'm pushing his upper body, but I'm stopping his feet from moving. If I didn't hook this knee and I push him, he just steps back. Right? So I'm going to push him and I'm going to hook his knee. At the same time, I go to a technical stand-up. These are all things that we learn in jiu-jitsu class. What I don't want to do is let go of his foot. If I let go of his foot, nice and slow, get up. We both get up. So I want to keep control of his foot. I'm up kicking, I'm kicking to the chest, playing a sweep. It's like a technical stand-up. Now get up. So now I've won this fight. Okay. And of course, at that point, I can strike or I can, you know, get out of there, whatever I want to do. But I've, first of all, stopped getting punched in the face. I'm avoiding strikes. I'm possibly hitting him with strikes. And then I get a sweep. Dang, so very nice. It, it's, and, and we've worked, uh, been able to work a lot of different moves into there. And almost kind of like created our own little, just stay there. This created our, our own little system from here where you can go from, if he's uh, got both feet forward, I'll go to this one. But then he knows what to do and he'll do the escape where he kicks his foot out. So then I can go to this one. Okay. Then if I, for some reason, I'm not getting this, I can go to my sickle sweep. Same thing. And then I can go right back to old school. So we've actually made a drill with these moves here. I'll go here, he'll kick his foot out. I go to this sweep, I go to this sweep, and I come back and I'll kick the other foot out. This sweep, this sweep. So, kind of working from an area that, um, you know, not as many people work from that situation in a real life situation that you could possibly be in. Um, trying not to get hit with strikes. Dang, nice. Thanks a lot, Phil. We appreciate the tour. Thank you. Appreciate you guys, man.